there was a judgment by the Creator on humankind for their sin? It's an important question. Because if we're just Soma here, doing what we're doing, and not going anywhere that we know of, I think you might live your life very differently to if you were convinced that there really is going to be a lake of burning sulfur brimstone, where those who fail to qualify will spend eternity. And that on the other hand, there is a place of great beauty and that there are even thrones for those who truly seek to serve the Creator. And I'm going to ask you, if you're skeptical, just to bear with me. Hear me as an engineer, as a scientist, as a person who thinks critically. And I ask you to do the same. Think critically. I don't expect you to believe anything that I say. But I do ask you to think about what I've said and go and check it out. Because I suggest for your consideration, it doesn't matter where you are on this planet right now as you watch this. If you go and look in your immediate vicinity, you will find massive evidence to support a global flood. And then there's the question mark. Did it just happen? Or was there a judgment involved? Come with me and let's look at some evidence. So we find overwhelming evidence of a global hydraulic and tectonic event. The South African gold fields comprising sedimentary layers over two kilometers thick. Sedimentary rocks all over South Africa and all over the world speak of a massive flood event. The halfway house granite dome molten rock upthrust by at least five or seven kilometers. The top of the dome sliced off level for thousands of kilometers. Massive erosion cutting deep valleys into the rock all point to a massive hydraulic event. And then we find that an ancient book, Genesis, confirms that this happened relatively recently, about four and a half thousand years ago. What if the Genesis account is reasonably accurate? We've established that Genesis is a reliable historical account to the extent that it reports a flood that destroyed the earth. What if Genesis is correct about the existence of a creator as well? And what if Genesis is correct that this almighty creator judged mankind with the flood and forewarned a man called Noah to prepare a survival vessel in order to escape? What if there's going to be another judgment and we are again being given advanced warning in order to escape? Are you prepared? So we find that the Ark of Noah gives solid evidence of judgment. In Genesis it's written, so you are the eternally self-existing, or the Lord, said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. And we see a few more images there of the discovery site where they've been excavating the ark and, and what it looks like. We find evidence all over the world of fossil graveyards, massive deposits of skeletal remains. We find that Genesis claims that the Almighty warned Noah and told him to build a ship, an ark, a container, and that he would bring flood on the earth to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which the breath of life, everything that is on the earth, shall die. I suggest for your consideration that the existence of the ship evidence that the Creator warned Noah if there was generally available evidence of a coming flood or ice object strike or flyby that was capable of destroying the planet, there would almost certainly have been other survivors. There is no evidence of more than one survival vessel. There is no evidence of more than one genealogy surviving. I take this as strong evidence that the Creator did in speak, indeed speak to Noah and that the flood was a judgment. Let's look at some other signs of judgment. An army drowned in the Red Sea, cities turned to ash, a fly, fire blackened mountaintop, 
a split rock with erosion channels. Turning to Exodus about 1555 BC, speaks of the Egyptian army being drowned in the Red Sea and we find that the crossing site has been found with the remains of chariots, horse and human skeletons and other artifacts found at that location. This took place at a place called Nueba, which you can see from Google Earth is a real place on the Gulf of Aqaba on the right hand branch of the Red Sea, exactly where Exodus positions the crossing site. And what happened was that the river on the left and the river on the right both discharged uh, erosive material into the sea and built up a sand bridge just under the surface of the water. And Exodus says that this water was separated by a wind. Technically this is quite possible. And as I've stated, the remains of the army have been found. Then we find in Genesis a report of cities called Sodom and Gomorrah where it is said that the Almighty rained fire and brimstone, burning sulfur from the sky and turned the city to ash. And there on the right you see a sulfur ball that was found at Sodom in the remains of the cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. There are millions of these sulfur balls and they light easily. And on the bottom right the remains of a rampart. A few more examples. The geographic location is exactly where Genesis says it will be. And we see the aerial views showing the location of these various cities. Here we see a couple of photographs of the ash remains on the left and an artist's reconstruction on the right of what it probably looked like. And so we can see very clearly that uh, the Genesis account is an accurate account of what we find. Again, I stress that I'm looking at Genesis and Exodus as simply historical books. I'm not ascribing any supernatural characteristics to them. We find also in Exodus a discussion of a situation in which Moses allegedly struck a rock and water flowed out and on the left we find a split rock with water erosion channels and on the right hand side we see the top of a mountain that has been blackened by fire just as Exodus says in Exodus chapter 19. Exodus claims that the Almighty descended on this mountain in fire and that when he came down on the mountain he spoke out to millions of people Ten Commandments, Ten Laws, which start out with I am Yah, the eternally self-existing, commonly referred to as the Lord, your mighty one, or commonly referred to as God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other mighty ones before me. Commandment number two, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in earth above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. The third commandment, you shall not take the name of Yah the eternally self-existing or the Lord your mighty one in vain. For Yah the eternally self-existing will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Fourthly, remember the Sabbath day or Saturday to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is the Sabbath of Yah the eternally self-existing. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is in your gates. The fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother. The sixth, you shall not murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear witness. Ten, you shall not covet. This is the only time in recorded history that I know of that the Almighty Creator has appeared in a manifest form and spoken to millions of people. Accordingly, what was said there should be viewed as being extremely important. The Ten Laws or Commandments are therefore the most important laws ever given. Continuing in Exodus 24, it's reported, Then Yah the Eternally Self-Existing said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and be there 
and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. And there you see an artist's representation of what they think that those uh, tablets of stone might have looked like. We read further that Moses made an ark of acacia wood, a, a container, a receptacle, and he put the tablets in that container. We read much later on in Kings part 1, chapter 8, that nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb. And on the right we see an artist's impression of the ark of the covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was hidden about 597 BC at the time that Babylon attacked Jerusalem and that the people of Israel went into exile. Those tablets form the basis of the covenant and in terms of the covenant if you break those terms you will die. There is no reported information about the Ark of the Covenant from the time of the Babylonian exile but there's no indication that it was taken into exile. The Ark was discovered in 1982 by Ron Wyatt, hidden in an excavated cave outside the walls of Jerusalem under a hill called Skull Hill, which looks like a skull and corresponds closely with Matthew 27, 33 and other verses. This cave is six meters under an execution site that bears close resemblance to that described in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And there's a math, uh, an earthquake crack, referred to Matthew 27 verse 54, that cuts through the middle stake or cross hole. And on top of that, there's blood with only the female chromosome that has flowed down the crack onto the mercy seat of the ark. This discovery provides close correlation with the four historical accounts that deal with the death of a prophet commonly known as Jesus Christ. His actual name was Yahushua, meaning Yah the Almighty is salvation, and Christ meaning anointed with the spirit of Yah. So the name Jesus Christ would be more accurately translated as Yahshua, anointed with the spirit of Yah. Anointing refers to the presence of the spirit of the Creator, Yah, on a human being metaphorically compared with smearing with oil. This man died on a stake or a tree trunk, not a cross. The cross is a demonic sign, an ankh, which is in fact a pornographic symbol. And so we find, for those who have studied these writings, that the only way that some of the things that are claimed for this man Yeshua, the anointed of Yah, or Jesus Christ. The only way those things could have come into existence was in fact for him to have died the way he did and for his blood to flow onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. There's more information regarding this in the end notes to this uh, DVD and other information is available from us, admin at etimin.org or graysales at bigpond.com.